In this lecture, we're going to finish up the growth uh, by condensation of an individual cloud droplet. Uh, we have our growth by condensation equations in terms of dmdt and drdt, and I wanted to point out an error that I found in the last lecture, and it has to do with this last equation. Uh, it's dr by dt is equal to the diffusivity constant times the um, density of the water vapor far from the droplet divided by the density of liquid water uh, divided by the radius of the droplet. I left this r out in the uh, equation at the end of the last lecture multiplied by the supersaturation. Um, so these are our growth equations and what we'd like to do is to look at how these equations govern the growth of a droplet. And that's what we have right here. Uh, we have the mass of the droplet versus a function of time. Uh, and uh, the mass growth rate uh, basically starts off uh, growing rather slow in time uh, and then accelerates uh, in time. Uh, as that uh, droplet is larger, it has a larger surface area that uh, allows the condensation to actually increase in terms of the mass of the droplet. Um, in terms of the droplet radius, um, the droplet, initial droplet radius grows very fast and then kind of uh, starts to taper off uh, because as the droplet has gotten larger, uh, it takes an increasing amount of water vapor condensation in order to alter the radius in a uh, small amount. And from this equation, dr by dt is proportional to 1 over r for a constant supersaturation. So what this means is that the smallest droplets grow faster than the larger droplets. And that has implications. So the other thing is, is if you want to figure out what the mass of the droplet is as a function of time, or more importantly, what the radius of that droplet is as a function of time, you actually have to integrate these equations. And you have to understand that you need to know, you know the temperature and the environmental supersaturation, and you need to know the, how the Kohler curve changes for that individual particle. And so the integration is actually quite complex and can really only be done numerically. And I'm going to spare you the details of how to numerically code that up. Uh, that would be an advanced class, uh, more likely a graduate class, that would actually allow you to do that. Um, <clears throat> but here are the results. Uh, for a numerical simulation of three different initial particle sizes, uh, where you have the mass of the solute, Ms, is equal to 10 to the minus 14th grams, 10 to the minus 13th grams, and 10 to the minus 12th grams. So you have a small particle, a medium particle, and a large particle, and all of those particles are starting out with an initial radius of 0.75 micrometers, so they're all starting off at submicron, and then we're going to look at the time in seconds of how long it takes for that initial particle, our haze droplet in this case, to actually turn into a cloud droplet of these different sizes. So for example, for the smallest particle, it only takes uh, a little about uh, 2.4 seconds for it to reach one micrometer, uh, but it takes 1,000 seconds for it to reach four microns, and then uh, 8,500 seconds to reach 20, and a full 44,500 seconds, uh, which is more than 12 hours, to reach 50 micrometers radius. And 50 micrometers radius is um, basically boxed here because that is equivalent to a 100 micrometer diameter droplet, and that is essentially the beginning of what we classify as drizzle. So for this small particle, it took more than 12 hours uh, for it to grow by condensation up to a drizzle sized droplet. And that doesn't change much uh, for the, even for the largest particle. It grows very quickly and then the radius, start, it takes a long time to grow the radius even further and still for the largest particle it still takes over 40,000 seconds in order for it to grow up to the size of a drizzle droplet. And so the net results of these growth by condensation equations is that this growth mechanism is just too slow in most instances um, to create drizzle droplets uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, about the only clouds that could in fact grow by this mechanism would be a long-lived stratus deck uh, where the cloud persists for more than 12 hours 
you might actually be able to get drizzle out of that droplet, out of that cloud layer, uh, if it was just growing by condensation. But that cloud layer would have to persist for a very long period of time, and that's not the way normal clouds normally uh, are in the atmosphere. And the second thing about this uh, growth equations are that the growth rate dr by dt is proportional to one over r, and that favors the growth of the smaller droplets. Um, and the larger droplets are growing small, are, are not growing as fast. And what that does is it kind of creates a monomodal uh, size distribution where all of the initial cloud droplets are actually approaching the same size. And that has implications when we start talking about the collision coalescence mechanism, which will be the subject of the next lecture.